All right, guys, given the uh, sensitivity of this topic and the amount of details and layers we're going to have to cut through, I'm going to warn you ahead of time, this one might be a little bit longer than usual. And as I like to record these one time through without a script, we might have to do this in several segments, given the fact that there is so much to discuss. Now, the sequel to Ghost of Tsushima, Ghost of Yote, was announced a few days ago at the Sony State of Play. And naturally, it was pretty well received. I already showed you in my last video that the YouTube like to dislike ratio was pretty staggering. Most people seemed happy with the trailer that they saw. However, there has been a lot of discussion about the actress uh, playing the role and the fact that they are deciding to move the series 300 years ahead and you know feature a different protagonist and given the fact that they are using a woman now instead of a man a lot of people came out right away and said the game's gone woke now I'm not one of these people that saw them put a woman in the sequel and immediately thought that that meant it was woke I was just more curious about the actress playing the person playing the character in the game given the fact that she has had some very, very interesting things to say on social media. So you see articles like this from Phantom Wire claiming that people are just bigots who want to harass her because of the fact that she's a woman and that they want Jin Sakai back in the game. But what really comes down to is the fact that the actress, Erica Ishii, has had some really questionable things to say on social media. Now, I'm going to be very fair and transparent. I myself say many questionable things every day on Twitter. You, if you follow me on Twitter, you know that there's some spicy things I'll post, maybe some memes or some very not nice things I'll say once in a while if somebody rubs me the wrong way. I don't think that that's a reason to condemn or cancel somebody. I do look at this, though, as a situation where you might look at this person more as an activist than anything else, given the nature of so much of what she says having to do with, you know, abolishing the police and trans rights and everything else. And given the fact that she's played a lot of roles, it would appear that tend to lean more into what I would say are more of a non-binary transgender ideology. If you look at like her, her credits, one of the games I didn't even realize until I opened up this article that she has actually worked on is Apex Legends, a game that has gone exceedingly woke more and more ever since launch. And it, it brought to mind one of these lines that her character had, and I forgot about this line until a few weeks ago. In fact, I was telling somebody about it. Her character at some point says, I'm starving. Is anyone else starving? I'd sell an ovary for some ramen right now. Now, you might think on the surface that's a, no big deal whatsoever, except for the fact that she is so heavily invested in trans identity and trans ideo uh, ideology that it just seems kind of disturbing. Now, a lot of this kicked off because Endymion put out this tweet saying that Ghost of Tsushima's sequel stars a Japanese woman, Samurai Warrior, because of course it does. They can't help themselves until every franchise that was built on masculinity is replaced by women. Ghost of Yote is hopefully a smaller spin-off game, but if this is the true sequel and this is the new main character of Virgin Sake, F that. So sick of the forced girl boss narrative, man. And again, I would disagree with his take from the get-go as far as just saying, well, it's a woman, therefore woke. I am on record as saying I really enjoyed the first Hellblade game. I thought the second game was crap. I thought everything that they built up in the first game to make her character likable and relatable and believable, they completely destroyed in the second game by having this forced girl boss narrative. So I understand where he's coming from. But I have a much bigger issue with the actress herself. But you even see sites like Culture Crave on Twitter saying that essentially... The community, the people that needs to touch grass are mad that it's a woman saying, no doubt that's the case. Of course, Learning the Law has pointed out a lot of this woman's crazy tweets on Twitter. And again, this is more of what I take concern or issue with, given the fact that she is so heavily invested in her identity, her ideology, her being gender fluid, and again, trying to act like she's, you know, representing uh, brown people because they, they can't speak for themselves, apparently because the color of their skin. I guess she did a $90,000 Kickstarter to travel to Japan to record a lesbian kiss in this short film. I, I didn't know much about this until I just brought this up. So again, don't quote me on this. I don't know the details about this one. Just very strange. But again, there were a lot of these things, a lot of questionable things that she has said. And again, I don't believe questionable things alone are a reason to cancel a person. However, I took a lot much uh, in, uh, more interest in this one segment right here. I'm just gonna play this little 27 second clip for you guys right now. This is something that I personally have a much bigger issue with. I'm just like so into Harry Potter, but also, uh, can I say turfs? Turfs. Can I say turfs? Turfs. 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 Um, turfs. And it, it is, I, I still maintain though that there is so much in there that, that you know, resonated with a lot of us misfits, a lot of us kids that wanted magic and, and, and yeah. really believed in it. And I will never let that part go. But f*** uh Again, this is somebody who can't separate the fact that J.K. Rowling doesn't like 
uh, biological men in women's bathrooms and the fact that they are obsessed with Harry Potter. So again, they go, I love Harry Potter, but F JK Rowling, F TERFs. TERFs again being a term for trans exclusionary radical feminists. Now, let me just say one thing real quick and get that on my chest. As somebody who is not a feminist at all, but who is a father of a daughter married to a biological woman, if a man follows my daughter or my wife into a bathroom, I will have an issue with it. I don't care what you identify as, biological males do not belong in a uh, women's bathroom or a locker room or a restroom or any sort of situation where there are females being undressed. That's just not okay. But again, they say anybody who has this uh, exclusionary mindset is a turf, and this is something that I would have a much bigger issue with. So I basically spelled it out like this today as best as I could, uh, you know, as best as I could put into words. And I said, a lot to process here. First of all, we don't know that Ghost of Yote will be, quote, woke simply because it has a female protagonist. Plenty of people seem to have faith in the studio despite the comments from the lead actress that have been unearthed. Also, Erica Ishii is entitled to her opinions, retarded and vile as they may be. If she can do her job well and it has no impact on the character, then she should have every right to voice the role. However, if people are hesitant to go near this game, seeing as the people making it seem to have pronouns and rainbow flags in their bios, I can't blame them one bit. We have seen many great studios turn to shit after allowing activists who see games as a vehicle for representation of marginalized people, rather than a means of entertainment, to infiltrate their companies. I know that devs such as Arthur uh, Smirowski, I believe his name is, the guy from Soulish 2, faced harassment from the woke mob for not including LGBT relationships in his game, and he has rightfully called out anyone who feels the desire to harass Erica Ishii over her casting. I have never condoned personal attacks, stalking, doxing, harassment, etc. That should be beneath us. And guys, I want to make that very clear. I have never condoned this behavior. I do not expect you guys to watch my video, get angry, and go attack somebody on social media, try to dox them, expose their personal information. No. I discuss things that are publicly available. And if you say stupid things publicly and you attack people for their identity or whatever, or you say you hate white men and gamers, we're going to talk about it on this channel because it's a lot of what we have here to discuss. But again, there's one thing to discuss it, another thing to intentionally go after somebody in a more malicious way, we'll say. On the flip side, if people can choose to boycott films featuring Hollywood celebrities who they think they have the right to tell us who they uh, we should vote for, which wars we should support, how we need to starve ourselves to save the environment, etc., then consumers absolutely have the right to not want to support a company that employs a woman who has vocalized such reprehensible opinions as in, i.e., F TERFs. And I am adding this in after the fact because for anybody who thinks that voice actors have no control or influence on the characters that they play, Think again, companies like Sweet Baby Inc. and a lot of consultation firms and people who outsource for hiring talent will intentionally hire people to fit certain demographics, certain roles based on ethnicity, orientation, lifestyle, ideology. Trust me, this is a real thing. Companies like Queervox exist for this very reason. Run and founded by J.P. Karlayek, a guy who is himself a uh, homosexual man who has played a number of roles and had a massive influence in the roles that he's played, such as Morph, who is non-binary and gay, as far as I know, in the X-Men 97 series, as well as the gay Joker in Suicide Squad Killed the Justice League. So guys, there is a very real connection between a lot of these voice actors and the characters that they play in these games, in these movies, and TV shows. For anyone who represents Sony in any capacity to tell people don't like it, don't buy it, after the disaster that was Concord, it's either incredibly bold or incredibly stupid. And that's something we'll get to in a minute, discussing the former chairman of Sony. But again, Razor Fist has actually brought up some good points, and I know a lot of you that have loved Ghost of Tsushima are going to be very mad at me when I discuss this. I have not played Ghost of Tsushima, so I am looking at this from an outsider's perspective, looking at this objectively as somebody who was planning on purchasing this game and playing it in the near future, but now I have questions. And I, I want you guys in the comments to explain your position on this to me. Razor Fist said, don't bitch about Ghost of Yote. You tolerated the cast full of ahistorical girl bosses in the first Ghost of Tsushima. Now you're getting more. You will receive precisely what you tolerate. Now, I want to discuss some parts of what he says there because there is a reality, as I've been looking into it, that apparently Ghost of Tsushima appealed to the feminist perspective quite well. You can see articles like this from Medium talking about how the game took a more nuanced approach to Legendary Samurai. Inverse having an article here about Ghost of Yote talking about the fact that there was the inclusion of a queer fem a female samurai in the first game. So you see the uh, author here, the article says, back then, talking about the first game, I asked Sucker Punch's creative director, Jason Connell, about the character and the inclusion of a samurai who's not just a woman, but a queer woman. There are instances of, when you look through history, that there were female samurai, and even in this time period that there were these stories, so we wanted to make sure that they exist, Connell said. That was an important thing to put in to show that the world is real and that they're humans. Talking about, I assume, women and queer people. 
It says, from the little we've seen in the new trailer, Yote's protagonist, Atsu, feels like she's cut from the same cloth as 2020's Lady Masako. They're both strong women facing difficult circumstances who pick up the sword to empower themselves. They might also have more than that in common. Atsu is voiced by Erika Ishii, who's been all over the video game voice acting map lately with major roles in Dragon Age Veilguard, Destiny 2, Cyberpunk, and more. Ishii self-identifies as queer and gender fluid and voices Valkyrie in Apex Legends, who is a lesbian and apparently doesn't want her ovaries. While Atsu's sexuality hasn't been officially confirmed, it's easy to see what sort of direction Sucker Punch could be headed given the choice in casting. Again, this is a friendly article from Inverse talking about how they assume the direction of this character's uh, sexual identity will head given the casting of this person. So we're not crazy for assuming that this might bleed over into the game itself. You see Reddit threads like this from four years ago talking about how wonderful the Ghost of Tsushima was as a woman given the fact that Jin does not once speak once in a de uh, degrading way about a woman based on her gender appearance, etc. When women are criticized, it's not with sexually explicit language. Multiple strong female characters of different ethical alignments have their own character arcs, flaws, and strengths. They're not sexualized. No scantily clad, immersion-busting sexualization of any character except for, except for Jin himself. Uh, let's see, a deft approach to romance that allows headcanon of relationships between Jin and others, but nothing explicit. This means no women are turned into just romantic plot devices and continue to be full, complete characters of their own. No, again, no gendered violence, blah, blah, blah. So the impression that a lot of people have had is that Ghost of Tsushima from the get-go was made for a more, uh, let's just say, inclusive and representative audience. I don't know. Again, I have not played the game. So guys, don't shoot the messenger. I'm just seeing what I'm finding you know, and picking up the pieces and trying to put them all together here. Furthermore, it is really funny that people try to point to the uh, inclusion of female samurai and stuff as something that is both historical and actually, you know, logical given the game and the time period and the country they're set in. When, when you start doing some research on people that were so, uh, supposedly, you know, female samurai and legendary warriors, and practically every single one of them is a story like Yasuke, where it's based off very little uh, history and very large amounts of fiction or legend that cannot be proven to this point. So again, for anybody that is a fan of Ghost of Tsushima, who's not a feminist, but says it's okay that the women were samurai in that game because of how there have always been strong female samurai in Japan, try again. There literally are no stories that I can find of historical... Uh, offensive samurai except for this one right here and this woman after killing one man allegedly ended her own life when she found out that her fiance or husband i guess had perished on the battlefield so again not exactly some hardened badass warrior now we have the more current story about how the former sony chairman sean Layden told gamers that if they don't like ghost of yote don't buy it now this is something that i cannot understand for the life of me why somebody would do it and you can see the tweet still exists right here uh, it's got, again, almost half a million impressions at this point. Sean Layden says, it's a game, an, uh, entertainment, a story, a team of creators believes in. They want to make this. It's a game. If you don't like it, don't buy it. In fact, why not make the game you want yourself? Oh boy, this is not a good look. Especially when you compare it to things like, again, Frost back in the G4 days saying, if you don't like it, don't watch it. Reality is, we won't buy it. And Concord proves that. The reality is that if you don't like the team of people making this game, and a lot of people don't, and again, you can see how all of them have their pronouns in the bio, and again, talking like we were talking about before, allegedly there is this belief that they want to be more inclusive and representative in their game like they were in Ghost of Tsushima. And again, don't shoot me, guys. I'm just saying. They appear to take that approach by trying to include these strong female characters, not even being historically based, in Ghost of Tsushima, and of course we've learned lately that they are pushing majorly into their DEI effort as they're ramping up DEI department hiring, according to Grums, with these articles here that are coming out, saying that they're trying to hire DEI specialists to join the PlayStation DEI team. And now, of course, we're seeing that, you know, Concord, the $400 million flop for Sony, wasn't a good enough indicator for them that what they're doing is bad and wrong. Now we see Assassin's Creed Shadows from Ubisoft being delayed after poor Star Wars Outlaws reception. And again, a large part of this being the lack of historical emphasis and care about the character Yasuke trying to make both characters pansexual. It's like Sony. You have another samurai game to learn from. Why can't you look at this and say, okay, maybe we should pump the brakes a little bit and realize that this is not the right direction. I know that Sony's not making the game Sucker Punch is, but at the end of the day, this will affect everybody connected to it 
regardless of what they think, if they think that they're doing something right by inc being inclusive and having a female character or a non-binary character or allowing the, the voice actress to have her own gender fluidity, you know, injected into the game or what, however it shakes out, or it could be the best game ever, guys. It could be the most popular game of all time. We'll have to wait and see. But what I find concerning is that this doesn't just seem to be a current trend, but it appears that Ghost of Tsushima has always had some of these tendencies in there. Whether people picked up on it could be a whole different story, but I know this was a lot, guys. Hopefully you were able to stick with me through the end. Hopefully some of this made sense. Share your thoughts down below. I am not attacking this game. I am not attacking Ghost of Yote, Ghost of Tsushima. I think the games could both be fantastic. Again, I still plan on this eventually like getting back to playing Ghost of Tsushima. I just am looking at this more objectively because I've never played the first game. I've never fallen in love with it. And I'm going, hmm, maybe there was the signs already there in the first game that there was a more subversive agenda at play and the sequel just confirms it. But again, I'm going to leave it right there. Let me know what you guys think about us. Share your thoughts down below. Again, I appreciate you guys for hanging here. Make sure to like, subscribe if you enjoy the content, and I will catch you guys on the next one.